Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today's video is going to be about another Yashica camera. In this case it's going to be about the, the Yashica 12 which as you can see is a twin lens reflex camera. Uh, one of the numerous uh, TLR cameras which Yashica made which uses 120 roll film. Uh, this camera is kind of a transition model between uh, the 50s uh, Yashica matte cameras and the last camera which they produced, the last TLR camera, the Yashica Mat 124G. Uh, this camera features some of the uh, uh, same concepts as the earlier Yashica Mats, uh, as well as the later 124G. Uh, but it's kind of a, a unique camera. Uh, it, it utilizes a lot of interesting things which uh, the other cameras don't have, while they also uh, have features with this, which this camera doesn't. Uh, they didn't produce a lot of these Yashica 12 cameras, and uh, though I deal a lot in Yashica cameras of all kinds, I don't often come across this particular one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the Yashica 12. And starting at the top here, we have the focusing hood. And as you can tell by looking at the focusing hood and also the rest of the camera, it, it doesn't have the usual like fake leather covering which 99% uh, uh, of the old Yashikas come in. It has this kind of textured rubber covering which I, I think is, it looks really good and it grips better than the, the leatherette covering which comes on the other cameras. And also as this is one of the later model uh, Yashica cameras, it has the later model Yashica uh, Y on the top. The, the same uh, version you would see on the 124G. Uh, if you pop open the hood uh, like so, uh, this is just the same as you would see. It works the same as on all the TLR cameras and you push on uh, this here to pop open the focusing loop. When I got this camera, the focusing loop kept falling down inside uh, by itself. This is a common problem with uh, old TLR cameras. Sometimes you have to kind of like try to reach in to uh, get them to lift up. Uh, a quick cure for this problem is to, uh, uh, what I do is I will open the view the sports finder and move this downward. And what I'll do is I'll look on the inside here and you probably see this chrome part here, which acts as something of a spring. Sometimes it gets uh, distorted and uh, it won't apply any tension to the focusing loop so it doesn't come up. Uh, to increase the tension, what I do is I kind of put my fingers on the outside and I will push in the center and try to bend that spring a little bit and get a little bit of curvature to it. And then it tends to pop up and stay in position more easily. Uh, they don't always sit perfectly horizontal, but as long as they're they're close, you know, they're use you know they're usable. But that's just a quick fix, which doesn't require any tools to get the focusing loop to work on these cameras. Uh, we have, of course, the sports finder, which I mentioned previously, and you just release the sports finder with this button here. Uh, in front of this uh, viewfinder hood, we have the front nameplate of the camera. In most of these cameras, it's just a nameplate. Uh, which just says Yashica, whatever, on the front. Uh, this particular nameplate, uh, like the old AS camera, also houses the light meter assembly. And this camera uses a battery-powered uh, CDS light meter, and the photo cell for the light meter is where I'm pointing my finger right now. And this is similar to the light meters which they put on cameras like the old Minister series of uh, rangefinder cameras. It works basically the same way. Uh, the light goes through here, and it causes a a reaction in the meter and the amount of light uh, changes the voltage one way or the other and causes the meter needle to move. This camera has a combination of uh, uh, needles in the top. We have a, a needle needle and a, uh, a couple, I guess, a needle which is in, uh, moved by, you move the needles by turning the shutter and aperture control so it's kind of a, uh, a coupled uh, system and what your goal is is to get the one needle to line up in the hole in the center of the yellow needle and when these are lined up uh, you have your camera uh, set to take a, a proper exposure. Uh, next to that you have the film speed window so when you're loading film in the camera so if you're putting say 200 speed film in the camera you would turn this dial with your finger until the number 200 is showing in the window and then your light meter is set to match the film. The light meter is battery powered and the battery chamber is located here on the side just like a Rolex Flex uh, uh, F model. Uh, this uses a 1.3 volt MR9 mercury battery. That was the original battery for this camera which is no longer produced. 
but you can use a PX625 alkaline battery. You can also use an LR44 or SR44 battery with an adapter. And some of these adapters have a diode built into them which will step down the, vo the voltage from 1.5 volts to 1.3 volts and that will make your meter more accurate. You can also buy a wine cell battery which has the correct uh, voltage uh, to operate the meter. Uh, however, the wine cells don't last especially long. Uh, so uh, normally I would just try to use uh, uh, an LR44 or SR44 battery with the diode adapter and those you can usually find on eBay or other places. Uh, they tend to be less expensive uh, in Europe and America than they are here in Japan, otherwise I would sell them. But uh, yeah, the battery issue is not that important on this. And uh, personally speaking, I, I wouldn't really trust the light meter on this anyway, even if I did have the proper battery and it appeared to be working properly. Uh, it's much easier and much more accurate to use a handheld light meter or a light meter app on your smartphone. Anyway, we're done with the tops. So let's go ahead and move on, over onto this side. And right here we have a shoe for mounting the flash gun. This is located in the same place as you would find it on the 124G. We have a flash sync socket here, and we also have a uh, flash sync switch here on uh, above the aperture lever. Uh, with a modern strobe flash, you can just use fill flash and use pretty much any, uh, since this is a leaf shutter, you can use any combination of uh, shutter or aperture speeds. You would just follow the recommendations which come with the flash you are using. We have on either side these uh, lugs and pins on the, the sides for uh, for either using the uh, original case or for using a neck strap. Uh, the original case on these cameras is really good at protecting it if you happen to drop the camera, but they are a royal pain to use if you actually use the camera because uh, to put you have to put the camera in the case, which means kind of like feeding the, the lever on this side through the, the big hole in the center of the case while pulling it over and getting it to go around these pins and stuff. And when you get the camera more or less set inside, you have to push these locking, uh, uh, I guess, locking pins down on the top on either side. So they slide through these slots and catch onto these pins. And then the last thing is to put on the nut on the bottom, which secures the bottom of the case. And as I said, it's a really wonderful way to protect your camera. Uh, but on the other uh, uh, on the other side, uh, replacing the film, changing the film is really difficult because you have to take the nut off, you have to pull up the uh, tabs, you have to work the camera out of the case and fish all the different parts out of it just so you can open the back of the camera and replace the film. Uh, personally, I don't bother with that. Uh, I would rather just use a strap uh, and have it attached to these uh, lugs here. You can use the Rolex Flex style straps or Mamiya style straps, or you, know, you can use just an ordinary strap, which will fit in through this slot here, and which has a hole which will fit in the bottom. Now the, this, the leather style straps, which have a hole with a, a slit cut in the bottom, those are the best ones because they secure it really tightly. And uh, these cameras, believe it or not, you know they, they aren't all that heavy. Uh, they, they weigh about the same as a, a consumer style uh, SLR camera with a lens, a DSLR camera. They don't have any batteries or anything really heavy in them, so they're not especially heavy. So uh, you don't put a lot of stress on the strap. And on rare occasions, I have broken a strap while uh, you know, uh, carrying a camera. And usually the strap will break on one side and the, the camera doesn't just fall. It just tends to start sliding down as the strap pulls around your neck to the other side. And I've never actually dropped a camera when the strap is broken on. I've had plenty of time to catch it. So uh, a leather strap is completely fine. You can adapt pretty much any kind of strap to work on this camera. Uh, it, it's pretty simple uh, to, to cook up something on your own or to use something you buy on Amazon or a camera shop or whatever. Next thing we have here is this uh, focusing ring and uh, we have a focusing scale on the black part of the base of the ring and this is arranged in both meters and feet. So you can preset the focus uh, like uh, you know, street photographers or candid photographers like to do. That allows you to kind of quickly, uh, uh, you know, say you are prepared for, you know, to catch someone standing in a whatever position at say 15 feet away. You would just set the focus for 15 feet and then set your uh, aperture and shutter and cock the camera. Pretty much all you have to do is just point the camera at them and shoot and you're, you're going to get uh, you know, a, a pretty well focused picture of them. Uh, around the focusing scale we have a depth of field scale and this will show you how much depth of field you have at any given aperture. So anything which is between these numbers, if you're shooting at f11 so, uh, so, uh, and 
I'm focusing, so F11 is here and here, so pretty much anything between, say, uh, say 7 meters and uh, 20 meters would be in focus at F11. So pretty easy to understand. Uh, the last thing on the side here is we, we have are these uh, uh, locking tabs, which are used to, locking tabs or pins, which secure the uh, film and take-up spool. The take-up spool goes in the top and the film spool goes on the bottom and you just pull these out and you turn them halfway and that locks them in the upward position and when you put in the film and take-up spool you turn them and they pop back down. And quite a simple way to, uh, it's easier on Yashica cameras than it is on some other brands. I really like the way these work. Moving over to the right side here we have the film winding and uh, shutter charging lever. This uh, camera does both jobs at the same time. Where certain other cameras you have to wind with the knob and you have to uh, charge the shutter manually. This does both steps with just a simple about one third turn. Uh, you wind it until it stops and then you fold it into the hole and then uh, the camera is ready to shoot. You have a film counter window located here at the top. You get 12 exposures of film from a, 120, uh, a roll of 120 film. Uh, when you open the back of the camera, that resets the film uh, counter back to zero. And when you load film in the camera, you simply wind and wind and wind and wind until the number one shows up and then you're ready to fire the first shot. I'll, I'll go into more detail uh, about the film loading when I get uh, closer to the end of the video. On the front of the camera, we have the more important stuff. I've already pointed out the, the light meter and windows on the top. There's a window located here below the, the nameplate, and this window shows the aperture and shutter speed which you have selected. And you would change the shutter speed by turning uh, with your right thumb, and you would change the aperture by uh, moving the dial with your left thumb. We have a few other things here. We have a self timer lever, and we also have the shutter release lever, which has a locking function to prevent you from accidentally depressing the shutter when you have the, the shutter cocked. That's pretty much it for the front. On the bottom of the camera, we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket and we have the locking ring which pulls in and out the locking foot. You unlock it by turning it leftwards and then you can open the film door like so. Uh, this camera has, I've already put in the take up spool in the top here. If I were loading film in the camera, I would uh, put in the take up spool and I would pull out this pin like so and I would drop uh, the film inside and reset the tab, locking the film in place. I would make sure that as I was pulling the film out, it was coming out with the colored side of the paper, that is white or orange or whatever brand of, pa of film you're using, is on the outside. If it's showing black, it means you have the film roll loaded it in backwards. Uh, so you need to take it out and put it around the other way so you can see the colored paper which has like the brand of the film and whatever on it. You simply pull that over the roller here and over the second roller and you feed it into the slot here on the take-up spool and you'll need to kind of uh, let me release the shutter here and you would simply wind the shutter and what I do to make sure that uh, the, I'm not going to have the film leader pull out is I will push with my finger you can see me moving my finger as I wind and I'll keep doing that till I'm sure that the paper is firmly caught by the take-up spool because I, I don't want to close the camera and then be winding the film and the take-up spool is moving but the film the paper leader and the film is not moving that's not fun when that happens so I just I always be a little extra cautious and make sure that I turn this until I'm sure that the, this is catching the film the paper and film and pulling it so once that's happening you can keep turning and turning and you'll see uh, the paper moving across the back and you'll see letters and numbers and things like that and then eventually you'll see an arrow which comes across the back of the paper and that will line up with these two red arrows on either side here when those are lined up you simply close the film door uh, lock it into place and then keep turning and turning and turning until it stops and when it stops winding turn it backwards and tuck the winding knob into the hole here and the number one should be showing in the film counter lever and that means the film is ready for take the first photograph and the shutter is also charged what you would do next is you would uh, use the light meter and the aperture and shutter speed to uh, set the proper exposure 
and of course you need to focus, uh, compose, and then simply shoot. And to take another photograph, go ahead and wind on to the next uh, frame. The shutter is already charged, just compose, uh, focus, and shoot. That's pretty much all there is to the Yashica 12 Twin Lens uh, Reflex Camera. Uh, I'm not really exactly sure what I'm going to do with this camera yet. It needs a lot of work, and uh, though I could sell it as is, and it's a perfectly good functioning camera, I'm not sure how many people would be interested in it if the, the light meter is, uh, isn't working. I'll probably go ahead and list it for sale, just you know, for the sake of it. Maybe someone wants it, or they would like to use it for parts or whatever. It is a good-looking camera. If nothing else, it would make a good decoration on your bookshelf. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, uh, I plan to be doing more videos here shortly. I've got uh, a lot more cameras lined up. If you'd like to see these videos, uh, please click the subscribe button. As I've said in previous videos, I'm always trying to get more people interested in film photography and vintage cameras, and if you click the like button, uh, that helps me get more people here. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.